entitled Progress by Consensus, Building National Consensus for Economic Growth. We're now ready to welcome on stage Mr. Mohammed Zubair, Minister of State and Chairman of Privatization Commission, Government of Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. S. M. Shabbar Zaidi, Senior Partner, A. F. Ferguson's and Company, and former caretaker provincial minister for finance, excise, and taxation. And to chair this session, we have with us Ms. Preetha Reddy, immediate past president, Aima, and executive vice chairperson, Apollo Hospitals Group. And let's welcome them on stage with a round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Preetha Reddy is the Executive Vice Chairperson of Apollo Hospitals. She was a founding member of the National Quality Council, an organization that provided the guidelines on quality standards to Indian hospitals. She is the managing trustee of the Apollo Hospitals Education Trust, a principal body leading the development of institutions of excellence in nursing, allied health sciences and management, with an objective to build a talent pool of skilled health human resources in the country. I now request Ms. Preetha Reddy to give her introductory remarks and please conduct the session. Namaste. The Honorable Minister of State and Chairman, Privatization Commission, Government of Pakistan, Mr. Muhammad Zubair, Mr. Shabar Zaidi, Senior Partner, A.F. Ferguson and Company, and former caretaker, Provincial Minister for Finance, Excise and Taxation. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen. Uh, distinguished guests, members of IMA, it's as always a pleasure to be part of an IMA event. And I must say that I enjoyed my uh, year as president of IMA because it was a journey of learning and a journey of building uh, relationships and friendships, especially uh, my visit to Pakistan. So I think uh, that's why they decided that I would be part of this session. I must say that, you know, whatever the politics of uh, two countries, two beliefs, two nations are, uh, the people are extremely friendly. It was one of the nicest visits I've ever had. And I did want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the uh, gentleman on the dais, the Honorable Minister, for facilitating such a wonderful visit for the delegation from India. So thank you for that. Uh, today's uh, topic is something which I think uh, every nation builder talks about. Uh, every member of the nation wants to know about, and I think it's a responsibility of uh, every individual. I th we heard earlier that the politicians and policy makers are actually a bridge between expectation and a method of delivery. And that is so true when Mr. Sachin Pilot said that, I thought it is something that you know all of us need to realize, that the expectations of the common man is very high, and the delivery of what the policymakers and the politicians have to do depends on national consensus. And much as we have a vision for a nation, it's something which has, which I think the detail uh, is in the delivery process. And for politicians to be able to deliver on their promise is probably the biggest challenge ever. The gentlemen on the dais, of course, have one thing in common, and they have championed the arduous realities of turning agenda into action. Therefore, it's a good opportunity for us to ask them about the importance of co-census for government's effectiveness and about achieving a co-census. India, of course, has come a long way and thanks to the economic co-census which was achieved and started the journey in the 1990s, 
is now one of the elite emerging economies. Now, Pakistan too is being counted among the next lot of promising developing economies. And pivotal aspects in the journey of economic transformation includes ease of doing business and encouraging regulatory institutions. Moreover, economic liberalization and globalization typically faces resistance, resistance both from the top as well as from the bottom of the pyramid. As we start the discussions, I'd like to invite Mr. Zaidi, as he has had a ringside view of Pakistan's economic reforms for many years. An accomplished chartered accountant, he is a leading authority on taxation policies and regulations in Pakistan. In 2013, he was the caretaker provincial minister for finance, excise, and taxation, a promoter of business and business education. He is a director of the Karachi Stock Exchange and a founder director of the Karachi School of Business and Leadership. I'd like to invite you to share your views, Mr. Zaidi. I thank AIMA for inviting us in, to speak on this matter. Uh, I have a very small uh, presentation on subject you're talking. Uh, very small, one page, uh, two, four, two, two page, and then I will come to my subject. Which, uh, and I have called it corporate government, not corporate governance. You know what I feel? the corporate government or traditional political leadership. The topic which is given to me was the, the, in this. And business community's perceptual model is that the prime minister is or cabinet is a CEO. And the parliament, board, parliament is a board of director and the people are customers. They, 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 they perceived the, the governments in this manner. But it is, it is not like this. The political party's perceptual model is leader, ideology and philosophy, boomer and mochas, and workers and masses. So both the things are realities. You can't ignore the one perception of the thing from the other perception of the thing, and both are real issues. I come back to the... That cab cabinet is not, the prime minister and the cabinet is not like, don't like, act like, they should act like a CEO and, and, a, and, a, and a CEO of a corporate body, but they don't like it. And the board, and the parliament doesn't act like a board of directors. There are, there are reasons for it. I am not a politician, but there are reasons for it. And similarly, the people are the customers, and you should serve the customer, and this is the right theory. It should, have, it should work like this. But it doesn't work like this. So this, this transitional gaps from political government to traditional political leadership is a subject which the, the, this transition has to, has to be owned by someone. And it, it ha there has to be a movement to bridge that transition which is going on between the two perceptions. I am talking it from my personal experience because fortunately or unfortunately I spent three months, only three months as a caretaker minister and all my life I have worked in, my, in the private sector doing accounting profession. I am a senior partner of PwC Pakistan or A. Ferguson Pakistan. And I have worked in the advisory capacity, but sitting on the government's chair and sitting on the PwC board or company is are two different mindsets and if when i when i re, re look at what we have been doing when we when we are sitting on this side of the table and we are sitting on that side of the table what we difference we see and if you, you ask me frankly both are not totally wrong both have got their merits their systems and their mechanisms how they how things work. 
So this transitional gap, which is actually not letting things work, as you were listening in the morning, Mr. Rajiv Pilot, that the quality of the bridge is not the quality of the of the Bajaj Auto, which is being made in the same city of Pune. There are reasons for it, and this transitional gap is to be bridged very seriously in our countries. Because in our countries, the position is slightly different. Coming back to what I, so what I, what I always said, that in our country, we had a, a thing which we call Charter of Democracy. And we, we, we actually gained a lot of, out of it. Now what, as accountant and as an economist and a student of economics, I say that and, and our, our this government is also progressing that on that concept that we should have a Charter of Economy also. Charter of Economy means that political parties, by and large, by and large, there is only one agenda, to serve the people and to deliver. So there has to be certain minimum things where we all agree. It's nothing personal. There's nothing belonging to a particular political party. There is certain charter which will go on forever. If you look at one of the reasons we feel in our society, one of the reasons of discontentment or not having a long-term and medium-term view is inconsistency of the policy. And by this inconsistency policy is that we wait, then when, when after five years, this government will come, things will be different. When this government thinks, things will be different. Or the manner of governing, governing the thing will be different. So, if we have certain basic benchmark fit assigned, that this is the basic benchmark where we will not deviate from what we are going to do and how we are going to do it. All of us agree that there should be a proper ratio in fiscal deficit, current account deficit, what should we trade in. That's, that's being done in all the countries. But facilities and the agendas matter to a certain extent and both whether I, while I'm in power, whether I'm not in power, it makes difference. But for a nation, for a customer, for a people, it's, it's, whosoever is in, in sitting in, in, in that house does not make a difference in that sense. So my question I always raise, have, have we made the government too big or too important? Or at times we say we have not made them too important. But I always say in our societies, in our societies, in the business sector, the government has to be smaller. But in the social sector, they have to be very big. We can't compare with the same. So there are different models working. We cannot say what is the exact right model. But what is what the government has to do and how the government has to run, it will depend on what is the general consensus of society for a long term, for a very long term, not the term we are talking. What we, we achieved, uh, what I feel we have tried in our, our governments uh, in the last, since reform, that if you look at, if you look at anyone, you talk to anyone in the, in the public sector, private sector, they will complain to you about the bureaucracy, the babu. That the babu has not worked. This person has not worked. As Vesa was saying to me, most of the complaints come about the tax people. In our country, we call it FBR. I have been the advisor of FBR for almost 25 years. Most of the complaints come about the FBR. The problem with, with our system is that there is an there is old model of bureaucracy. And there is a new model, not a new model, but there is a concept of regulators. Like in our country, we have oil and gas regulatory authority, we have got security exchange commission, we have got uh, print and media, PAM, what we call PAMRA, then we have got NEPRA, these are regulators. RBI is, is a regulator in the bank. There's a difference, there is a difference between a bureaucratic setup and the regulators. What I have felt in our society, the, the, the empowerment and the recruitment and the level of interaction of the, and the power of the regulators is not being digested by the bureaucracy. 
in the sense it should have done, be done. So the regulators are different than the people who actually are in the bureaucracy. So this transition between regulator, the, the bureaucracy, the government, and the people, this transition is getting mixed up. And that is why if we feel that the delivery levels, the delivery levels and the delivery quality of the real input to the common man is not what is generally perceived. And then that disconnect starts between the, between the government and the, and the people, and the masses. And, and I, I come back to my own thing that this, is, this model is also not workable. At the same time, the second model is also not workable because that is the old traditional politics. So the, there has to be a linkage between the two. Coming back to our own experiences, what we have found that the basic uh, issue which we face, and I always give an example, that in Singapore, the one of the most highest paid executive is the chief executive of the, their revenue authority. We obviously cannot do this thing in the country, in our country. Maybe I don't know much about India. So the question is, would I be actually getting the right quality of the people in a long-term basis in that kind of service? And that is where the problem ultimately will be there. Whether the right talent, the society, from the right talent of society will be there in politics and in the bureaucracy, in the regulators, which are relevant. We can't, we cannot make them irrelevant. They are very relevant. Or rather, they are the only relevant people. So whether the right minds and the right people will be in these three spheres. Our, our sons and daughters would like to be corporate lawyers or corporate accountants or actuaries and accountants and doctors and engineers. But very few people would like to go on that different traditional fields we used to work. So the, the, the remodeling, which is, which is very important in the government, all governments, is a, is a subject which we are not considering as we should have considered. Again, I'm coming back to Singapore model. The accounts of the Singapore FBR, what we call Central Board of Taxes, are prepared as if they are the accounts of a corporate body. Unlike us, both of us, we don't have that kind of environment in the tax collecting mechanism. So all of us, when we are all businessmen sitting here, when you ask what is the problem of the government, all the people will say taxation authorities. 99% of people will say this thing. I have all my lived my all life in the, living in these, in these, or dealing with these matters. But what is the solution? Where the solution lies? Can it be resolved by changing a person at the top? Yes, he will give some guidance. But actually, the, the capacity building will only be there when a high quality induction today, if we start today, we, it may, the reap, we may reap the benefit after five years, 10 years, 15 years. But let us start today. And that's what we have try, trying to do in our country, to, to induct, try to bring in the concept how to induct the talent of a real talent in the spheres where the people's life is involved. Because in uh, my business, I am concerned with my own life. In my firm, I am interested in personally in a different sphere. But when I am dealing with the people's money, when I am dealing with the people's uh, free, so I am not a very good, a very uh, strong uh, 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 spokesman on the matter of this corruption and things like that. These are very relevant. But the real delivery issue, in my view, are coming because of the capacity. Whether that person who's sitting on that table, on that chair, on that decision-making process, whether he has the right perception, a right knowledge, a right technology available to deal with the 
the matter which we are talking about. The, la the last thing I want to say about this is the solution lies in one thing, this thing, and the second solution lies in automation. I ran a hospital as a charitable function, I ran a hospital there. We have a cameras all around the hospital. And we don't check which nurse is serving the patient or not serving. But whenever we, we see a complaint, we can take out the, the flame and see whether you have done wrong or right. So every, everyone knows that if I do something wrong, my photo and my things are coming on camera. And I will be account, made held accountable. So in this process, I'm just giving an example. This process, process of automation, this process of documentation will ultimately put pressure on the people who are driving. So we, if you look at the, the level of automation in the, in the delivery of the government services, despite all our things, that is not in the pace that is required with the pace of development we all are going through. That is the real problem of the masses if you look at the government system. Thank you very much. I would just like to complete it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Zaidi. I think it was uh, quite transformative uh, what you told us. Lots of lessons to be learned, and more than anything else, uh, I like the way you said.